Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. So we are bump day for you, Wednesday for me. And so happy, so happy. Just a few more days to go. But we've got a plethora of uh, new segments here. We've got Juan Antonio Reyes' son has done something. We've got Mohamed El Nenny in tears. Ben White contract extensions. We've got even David Raya talking. Talking? We're going to get into this one on the other side of this music intro. Yes, welcome back again to Canon Fodder TV, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Yeah, this one, this one, this world, this one. I tell you what, I'm tired. <laughs> Getting tired a lot these days, but forget about my my tiredness. Let's get into this. This we've got a plethora, which means I think a lot of new segments. Uh, we don't even have that sign which says. Just click on the like button. You don't have to. You don't even have to subscribe. If you can lend me your ears for the next 10 to 15 minutes, we'll be happy with that. As happy as Larry. So let's get into the first uh, new segment uh, of the day. Uh, i tell you what, what a scorcher. What a scorcher. First new segment is in regards to David Raya. Yes, David Raya. Has spoken to um, the Athletic, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Where they interview um, uh, taking risks at Arsenal, uh, Arteta influence and Ramsdale relationship. Well, if you didn't know, it's been two months since David Raya joined Arsenal from Brentford, the Bees. Yet yeah, the goalkeeper is already convinced the move has been a success. Now, into it, we were interview uh, in the Athletic. The Spaniard has asked if he is at the peak of his career. His answer is unequivocal. Is that not? Is that not come from from Latin? Unequivocal because it's similar to um, Spanish. Anyway, he says yes, yes. I have taken an important step at uh, a club uh, level. I am at one of the most important clubs in the world. So that is an incentive and gives you pride competing in the Champions League, uh, which was one of my objectives. Now, Raya signing in a mid-August triggered. The intense debate about whether Arsenal could justify two high-class international goalkeepers with Aaron Ramsdale having established himself as a first choice soon after joining the club in the summer of 2021. Now, an Englishman was initially picked ahead of Raya at the beginning of the season, starting the Premier League victories over Crystal Palace and Man United, as well as a draw with Fulham. However, between September and October international breaks, Raya was selected by uh, manager Mikel Arteta for all four top flight fixtures, plus Arsenal's first two Champions League outings and since 2017. Yet despite the competition for a starting place, with both goalkeepers hoping to prove themselves to their international managers before the European Championship uh, next uh, summer, Raya sees a long-term future for himself at Arsenal. Incredible, incredible, Ryan Manimal. Uh, problems afoot? No, no. These two goalkeepers are professionals. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm thinking oh, play, professional players don't get upset. Of course, players get upset because they're human beings after all. But Raya, he's looking to cement himself, cement himself in the number one spot. It's for Aaron Ramsdale, like I said a million times, just to continue doing what he's doing. And if, if I say David Raya gets in a bad form of patches, bad patches of form, yeah, then he can might have his um, his chance to shine and do and show what we all know he can do. It's a bit of a strange one because you see and you know that we've got two number ones. It is. There's no fact. But do we have two number ones? Well, one can only play. We can only have one goalkeeper at a time. But it's it's like you can see Ramsdale is a fan favourite. He gets a little, little bit over-exuberant sometimes. But what can you do? Just play your best and hope your turn comes again, Ramsdale. But I, I tell you what, David Raya, he just says in the report there, he is at the right place at the right time, at the right club. 
And one of his objectives was to play in the Champions League. So you can't beat that, can you? You can't beat Can you beat that? The World Cup. <laughs> in the World Cup. Anyway, we go onwards and upwards. So we've got um, some transfer news or such, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll go with um, uh, Ben White uh, for the time being. So um, the, 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 from what I'm reading here, Arsenal have held positive talks with Ben White. And uh, as they continue to work on trying to tie down the core players of their squad, the Gunners have made a, a contract renewals uh, for key players. Uh, as you know, the familiar faces, Bakayu Saka, Martinelli, just to name but a few. But um, I just want to scoot over uh, Ben White and quickly go into, which is basically, is it another segment? No, not really. Not really. Uh, Mohamed El Neni. Now, Mohamed El Neni, I, I know a lot of you don't rate him. And that's that's fine. It's fine if you don't rate him. But a, a, a Stuart, 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 and servant to the club. Now, Mohamed El Neni said that he cried when Arsenal asked him to stay. He says he wants to finish his career at Arsenal. That's what he said. No, I'm not saying that. Also, Midfielder tells the uh, standard sport about his love for the Gunners, playing his role uh, in their title challenge and uh, starting his own football club. Don't forget, he's done his badges, hasn't he? Well, Mohamed Elneny was told earlier this year he would be signing a new contract of Arsenal. He broke down in tears. At the time, Midfielder uh, Elneny had just suffered a serious knee injury that uh, would keep him uh, sidelined until September, uh, following 260 days on the sidelines. Uh, with his contract set to expire in June, the 31-year-old fear his seven-year stay uh, in North London was over. Arsenal, how, however, uh, had other ideas for the Egyptian international, uh, was handed a new one-year contract to ensure he remains uh, uh, the squad's longest-serving player. Uh, he said in his own words, it was one of the happiest days of my life, said Onyeni. Uh, the way they spoke to me, the way that the entire club was happy about this decision, they made me cry this day. Arsenal Football Club, they know I love them 100%. So much. They know I don't want to leave. I want to stay and finish my career there 100%. Uh, I was injured and my contract was finishing and I could not play anymore last season. And they came straight away after I got injured the next day and said, Mo, what sort of contract will it have to be? We love you here and we want we want you to stay. Really, this club is great. Now, Anelli has been at Arsenal so long that he, he calls uh, North London home. His actions back up his words and it is a sign of how he settled uh, he is and how much he's looking uh, to the future. That he has launched his own football team, yes, in the capital. El Nani FC, yes, was born earlier this year as an uh, uh, under 10s uh, side, which the midfielder some played in and helped coach. Expansion uh, began during the summer with a further youth size and a senior team, I by the Arsenal player. I tell you what, now I have said on many occasions, we can't have any space for you know sentiments uh, for any players. But I've got to make an exception. I have to make an exception for Mohamed El Nenny. You never see him at the front of the newspaper doing and saying the wrong thing. You never see him at the back of the newspaper saying and doing the wrong thing. He's kind of standing with someone in the middle saying the wrong thing. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. A servant to the club for seven years, and it will be eight years. Now, we know the average, uh, I'll say, um, uh, age for players to end their careers is roughly about 33, 32, 33, because um, Eden Hazard has just um, retired, hasn't he? So I will say Mohamed Ali maybe has maybe maximum two years, two more years left in his legs. But you know what? He's got a contract. It was nothing to do with me. It it was nothing to do with me. <laughs> it, was, it was down to Mikko Arteta. Nothing to do with me. But... Mohamed El Nenny, I wish you all the very, very best. And he made him cry. Arsenal made him cry. Oh, my goodness. No, I want to cry now. No, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. Um, now, I did have other some other players. Um, so I did a poll in regards to who are you going to sell? 
Ghostbusters. No, yeah, but uh, 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 small list of players, who would you sell amongst the small list of players? Now, I'm not going to go into the list just yet, but uh, what I have seen, or what I've seen here, some players, their contracts up to, up next year, and you're not Cedric Suarez. June, next year, 2024. Uh, Mahone Neonene, Jorginho is also up next year, and a goalkeeper, Raya, if, if, his signs and stays with Arsenal will also be up next year, June the 30th uh, next year. Uh, and we've got one more new segment that we need to go in. I kind of, I think I left the best. Yeah, I left the best till last, actually. Uh, a little bit solemn. Um, I don't know what to say. Well, anyway, let, this is how I'm going to say it. So, uh, Jose Antonio's uh, Reyes' uh, son, uh, Jose Antonio Reyes Jr., as one of the late Arsenal star, assigned for Real Madrid yesterday. The 16-year-old penned his first professional contract with La Liga Giants after impressive for the club's uh, 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 B side. Uh, and in his own words, he said, it's a very special moment for me. So the first thing that came to mind was, we've got to remember uh, the untimely death of his father. Four years. The time has gone so very, very quick. That's one thing. And the other thing that came to mind was, you want to leave a good legacy because no one's going to live forever. You know, no one's going to live forever. You know, whether I die of old age or, you know, uh, I don't know if I suffer bad health or something happens to me, but no one can live forever. But before you leave this mortal coil, the earth, you want to make sure you leave a positive legacy. And I think if there is a heaven, his father would be so happy looking down at his son, sign his first professional contract. So congratulations to you, uh, Junior. Again, I think your father will be very, very proud of you. And you know what? These have been the new segments currently running on Bump Day for You, a Wednesday for me. Now, before I go any further, um, I've got a massive, massive announcement to make about the channel now it's nothing about oh you know i'm, I'm gonna leave not just yet i'm not leaving just yet no 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 you're not gonna get rid of me you know so soon uh but i would say um i am going to be traveling two weeks to central america um so good matters will be sitting into the hot spot um, he won't be doing the easy talk no 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 that, I, I will leave that for me and talking of the easy talk this coming friday will be the hundredth easy talk. I kid you not. The hundredth easy talk. And you can see I'm there thinking, oh, oh my goodness. The one hundredth easy talk. And boy, have we done some shows. Have we done some shows? Oh my days. So it's going to be a special one insofar as I will not have any guests. I have not ask anyone to come on the show with me it's just going to be me reflecting on uh the, the shows the east talk that that is and how it came about and actually maybe it come reflect on how the channel came about but i can't believe it 100 easy talk shows oh, i'm feeling old man <laughs> i'm feeling old so join me on Friday, 7.30 p.m., where I'll be on my jacks because I haven't asked anyone. I want to just kind of give that space to myself and just kind of reflect on, on the easy talk as well as other things as well. I feel a little bit uh, melancholy. Is it melancholy? Maybe melancholy. I'm not sure what's the word. Uh, so that's on Friday, 7.30 p.m. And then next week, Monday, which is going to be uh, the, the 23rd, would be my last show before I head out on my, my trips to Central America. I might do one show because I'm hoping to meet some Aldrich from uh, Costa Rica, uh, Arsenal Costa Rica out there. We have uh, made connections. I'm hoping to, to do a short video. But apart from that, I would not be doing any Canon Foy TV content. A good, well-earned break, but it's a business trip as well as catch up with some old friends of mine. So I thought I'd get off my chest. Friday, 100 easy talks. I need to put some dye on my chin here. 
Anyway, let's get into uh, the X platform and see if anybody has retweeted or said, hey, hello, hey. And uh, Johnny Giza has retweeted that uh, we are live with David Haraya, Ben White, and of course, uh, uh, Jose Antonio uh, Reyes uh, Jr. And of course, Mohammed El Nene in tears. Just so John, thank you for that. I do appreciate that. Uh, let's get on to uh, the platform. The platform, yes. Because I did do a poll question. The poll question. Alex, what was the poll question? Well, give me a moment. I'll get into that. The poll question was, who you going to sell? Ghostbusters. Who are you going to sell out of these players? Who would you sell out of these players? So I put Rhys Nelson, Smith Rowe, Jorginho, even Sajid Suarez. And I tell you what, over 1,000 votes. 1,000 votes. Thank you for that. Six comments and 30 likes. That's coming, getting back to where we really should be. Yeah, much like Arsenal and Champions League. So, who are you going to sell? Now, on 3% of the votes, it was Rhys Nelson. On 5% of the votes, it was Smith Rowe. On 6% of the votes, it was Jorginho. On, on a whopping 86% of the votes, you voted for Sejit Suarez. You horrible lot. You're all horrible. Don't like you. I'm joking. I'm joking. I was joking. All right. So let's go into uh, the live chat. Uh, just been over, just just two comments here, and it's fine. It's quite all right. And uh, Static says, "Hey, Alex, and all uh, the gunners around the world, think about that Static. I hope you are well. Say hello to your family before everyone on Canafoy TV as well. Me, myself, and I. And Johnny Geese says, uh, "Good evening, Gunners. There you go. There you go. All right." And um, we, I believe, have finished. Oh, we've got one more. Uh, oh, John just says, uh, easy, 100 talks. So congratulations. Thank you. For, well, we're not quite there yet. It'll be Friday. It'll be Friday. I can't believe it. 100 easy talk shows. And we've seen some some laughter. We've seen some, some serious debating, some arguments, some tears. It's been for me. And um, some no-shows. A lot of no-shows. I mean, like, people don't turn up back in the day. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm not coming, and I had to go live on my own. Oh, what a baptism of fire. Baptism of fire, I tell you, I tell you. All right, uh, okay, so uh, we are finished. Um, I will be back tomorrow. Am I going to be back tomorrow? I don't even think I'm going to be back tomorrow. Yeah, because as you notice, I'm doing less content. It's not all about content creation, man. This is not my job. This is not my job. I just love doing it, just for the sake of well, not for the sake of doing it. It's like a hobby. It's a hobby. That's what it is. All right. But uh, uh, until then, thank you for joining me. I notice there's only been uh, one thumbs up, and it's quite all right. We're apparently making our way to twenty-one thousand subscribers. If that means anything, does that mean anything? I don't think it means anything. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Anyhow, people, uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you to you for joining me over here. And uh, you might see me tomorrow. Yes, you might see me tomorrow. But if you don't, don't get so happy. <laughs> this has been Canon for the, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world.